The Southern Conference, or SOCON if you're in a hurry, features some of the most impressive stadiums in college football. They might not be as big as their FBS counterparts, but pretty much every stadium has its own distinct, well thought out design. Anyway, enough rambling. Here are the SOCON football stadiums. Foster Stadium, v my Keydets. To be honest, I didn't know what a Keydet was before looking it up. It's a cadet from this particular institute, but I'm more familiar with their mascot. The kangaroo has got to be the best advertisement for veganism there is. They just eat grass, but they're ripped. Anyway, I do like when the stadium is built into the surrounding landscape, and the main stand, which is big and steep, does just that, barely rising from the earth. On the other side, you have these huge castle-like buildings forming the backdrop, which certainly makes for a unique setting. The main downside to this stadium is the track, and it's actually the only stadium in the conference to have one. EJ Whitmire Stadium, Western Carolina Catamounts. Man, I love how the campus is pretty much located amongst the wilderness of North Carolina. Okay, wilderness is perhaps a bit of a stretch, but nowhere but America would you see a nearly 14,000 seat stadium clunked in what appears to be a small locality amongst the mountains. The scenery is not the only thing that's looking good. I like that purple and gold colour scheme as well, and it's contrasted by the stark black tinted glass of the arena beyond the south end zone. Finley Stadium, Chattanooga Mox. It's another cracking venue, one that hosted the FCS National Championship game for over a decade. You can see why. It's quite large, the largest in the conference. It was brand new at the time it started hosting it, and it's right in the heart of the city more or less. The exterior is a little unusual in that it's done up in some vibrant colours, colours that are especially fitting at the moment. By comparison, the seating is fairly understated, monochromatic and symmetrical, with the same size split level grandstand on each side. The grass berm and the video board tie the whole place together. Gibbs Stadium, Wofford Terriers. Damn, would you look at that foliage? Those purple trees are quite the sight, as is the stadium as a whole. What little exterior there is, is all white, and it looks all right, even at night under the lights of the bright. But, no, that, that wasn't a freestyle. Sentences are allowed to rhyme without being a rap. The landscapers and the gardeners have outshone the builders here for sure. That grass berm, framed by the hedges, is one of the most aesthetically pleasing I've seen. It's a stadium fit for a postcard. At least when there are leaves on the trees. It's not quite as pretty in the dead of winter. Johnson Haggard Memorial Stadium, the Citadel Bulldogs. With a name like the Citadel, you better bring your A game when it comes to the architecture on campus. And for the most part, they do. But what an embarrassing disparity between the home stand and the visitors stand. This is an actual citadel for all intents and purposes. It's tall, solid as a rock, impenetrable, well you can walk through the doors, but this is less imposing than the average cubby house. I should probably point out that there was a more substantial visitor stand which had to be demolished for safety reasons, and a new permanent stand will eventually be built. Other than that, the athletic centre beyond the south end zone looks incredible. What a stadium. Five Star Stadium, Mercer Bears. Just so we're clear, it's sponsored by an auto repair company called Five Star. In reality, it's probably a four and a half star stadium. Despite the traditional aesthetic, it's actually less than a decade old. And that becomes a little more obvious when you look at the seating layout, which just looks modern. Especially the Western Grandstand, which is pretty much like the one on the other side, except they've just chucked a huge stand on what would have been the concourse. I assume the same can be done on this side if the stadium ever needs to expand. I should also point out the huge video board that was recently added. Paladin Stadium, Furman Paladins. The main stand here looks like a straight up courthouse from the outside. But on the inside, they're not handing out death sentences to jaywalkers, just playing football. The interior is much simpler than the outside. It does, however, have what might be the most impressive hedge work in college football, 
and like most stadiums in the conference, there's a rather scenic backdrop, including a view of Paris Mountain. There it is in all its glory. Paris Mountain, so this must be the Eiffel Tower then. To be honest, it seems a little overrated. I can see an almost identical tower out my window right now. Cybert Stadium, Sanford Bulldogs. It's the smallest stadium in the conference, but the capacity is all that it's lacking. Once more, it has a distinctive design. The main thing that sets it apart is probably the press tower built in the Georgian colonial style, matching the rest of the buildings on the campus, as well as this unusual section of premium seats below it. Up until recently, there was a running track around the field. That's why there's a fairly large gap between the stands and the field as well as this large gap between the end zone and Cybert Hall. Not that that matters. The field house over here is a recent addition, that's why it's so close. William B. Green Jr. Stadium, East Tennessee State Buccaneers. We end with the newest stadium in the conference, which has some similarities with Five Star Stadium. But instead of adding a big upper deck on the concourse, they've just added a rather nice press tower. Well, not just a press tower, it includes some fully enclosed rows of premium seats. It also has a decent brick exterior with some metallic hits, and yeah, it's a clean looking stadium overall. And those were the SoCon football stadiums. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. We actually have a special offer at the moment where the first 800,000 videos are free. Thanks for watching, have a good one.